Glory to God, Father, you're wonderful, you're mighty, you're awesome. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We give you glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're marvelous. You're amazing. You're mighty. There's none like you, Father. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Father, I praise you for everybody that is watching this broadcast. And I decree over you that you shall be delivered from all evil. You will fulfill your purpose according to Jesus. You will. You will, you will, you will, you will, you will, you will. You will break the curse of darkness. You will, you will, you will. You will live out the light of God. You will let your light so shine before men. You will, you will, you will. You will accomplish great exploits. Greatness will come out of you by the grace of God. You will. Saints, life is all about decisions. And a lot of times people, they, uh, they, they curse themselves because of how they talk and how they perceive things. And they say things as if, you know, you have to wait on something to become godly or wait on something to become powerful or wait on something to become free. When in all actuality, your whole life is just the manifestation of what you have decided. Everything, financially, mentally, physically, everything, your, your, your time on earth is a river of decisions. Your time on earth is a river of decisions. So on earth, every day that you live is simply a river of decisions. Time is a river of choices. So imagine you have the same amount of time as everybody else. There's a billion other people on earth. So how does a person get anointed? How does a person operate in higher grace? How does a person have more angels around them? How does a person have more money? How does a person have more wise choices? They have more wisdom, more knowledge simply because of how they have chosen to operate time with the river of decisions. So don't make excuses, just make a decision. Don't have delays in procrastination. Make decisions. Decide what you will become. Decide what you will do. Decide your dedication to Jesus. Decide it. Decide it and do it. I want to magnify the power of asking God for grace to do something because when his grace comes, it is an invisible power that produces visible, um, visible discipline, visible um, activity, visible consistency. If you don't receive the grace of God in prayer to do something, you may not keep on doing it. And this is why a lot of people fall prey to inconsistency and unfaithfulness. Imagine what you was doing six months ago in God, you're not no longer doing it. Think about it. You have lost. You have been defeated by Satan. Whenever there's a divine activity that you used to do, that you no longer do, you have lost. You have lost to Satan. You have to receive grace in prayer. You have to go to God in prayer and say, Lord, I pray for grace to do this. I pray for grace to do that. I pray for grace to finish. Father, give me grace. Give me, saints, prayer is humility activated because you're showing that Lord, I need you to get what you told me done. Moses said to God, I will not go unless your presence go with me. What Moses was saying was, I'm going to pray and show you my dependency. And also, I'm going to let you know 
that I need your graces with me so that while I'm doing what you say, my heart would even be in the right place. I want my heart to be pure. When Moses said, I want your presence to go with me, what Moses was saying, I want the heart that I have to also be doing the activity. I don't just want to do what you say. Saints, there are people that's doing the will of God that's going to hell. Because their heart is not in it. In some aspects, even physical obedience will not get you into heaven in some aspects. Because your heart obedience was not obedient. Your physical obedience did it. Your heart obedience didn't do it. When you're sold out, your soul is out. It is exposed to the presence of God. Being sold out means that my soul is out. I'm not hiding my soul. I didn't closet my soul. I deposit my soul. Degraste, grocos, dagrigues, darandos. Vrazorugos de grazi ekle maezio hagrege iziklasi o correge de klese. Not closeting the soul, depositing the soul. Being sold out means that my soul is out. I'm not hiding it from God. That's the only way for you to make it to heaven if Jesus has your soul. If you look at what King Jesus magnified, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose what? His own soul. So the soul is really the matter of where you'll spend eternity. Where's your soul? Where's your soul? Many people act like God is dragging them. Oh, I'm doing this only because God told me to do it. I really don't want to do this. This ain't what I want to do. I want to do something else. You listen to a person that's on their way to hell. Imagine you, the creator of the universe hearing you tell him, my soul wants this. My soul really want to do this. I ain't, my soul ain't with all of this. Think about it. Why, why, why God going to have you in eternity and you let him know that your soul, you your soul really want to be with Satan? Think about that. People do that all the time and they think they sound deep. They think that they sound so... So, 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 so spiritual. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, ah, 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 my soul. Your soul is going to be the matter of judgment. Think about this. It is your soul. So saints, I want you to catch this. What are you feeding your soul? How much do you read the word of God? How much do you meditate on the word of God? How much do you take time to feed your soul God's words? How could you be God's friend and you don't spend time with his words? How could you be filled with the Holy Ghost and you don't even read his words? It's impossible for any man or any woman to be filled with the Holy Ghost and you don't read his words. It's impossible. It's impossible. Some of you all got favored because you was reading God's words. You don't even read his words no more. Your favor is dying. Your favor is going to be lost. There are reasons why God favors you. He favors you because he sees that you are feeding off of his materials. You're feeding off of his spiritual food. You're feeding off of his spiritual words, his spiritual mindsets, his spiritual ways. You will die off from what God is doing if you're not feeding yourself his way feeding yourself his words. So get back to the words of God. If you want your soul to be right, take time with the words of God. If you want your soul to be quickened back into righteousness, spend time with his words. If you want your soul to have cleanliness, get back to God's words.
Read Proverbs 4. Read Proverbs. Read things. Uh, operate in studying. The word of God says study to show yourself approved before God. It's telling you that studying has a grace to unlock God's approval. Because when you study, that means that you take deep thought on things that God said and it immerses, it soaks your nature. It soaks your nature. Some of you all, you got a lot of time on your hands and you don't even know no scriptures. Woe be unto you. You take your time, man. You take your time and do all type of stuff and you're supposed to be God's friend. You take your time, you got time. Replace the time that you're scrolling on your phone with God's words. Replace the time that you're looking at vanity with God's words. You're defiling God's temple because his words is what he has scheduled for your eyes, for your ears. Get the words of God and make it your prize, your treasure. Stop wasting your life. You think God want to make you wealthy and you don't even read his words? You think that you think that he's trying to make you a multi-millionaire? You think that God want to suffer when he give you a big old house and you ain't got no time for him? You think that that's what God blessing you for? You think that God want to cancel your debts, make you rich, make you healthy for you to take that healthy body and go study and spend time everywhere else other than his words. You think that God want to release money coming to you and you ain't even got no time for his words. Saints, I'm rich. I'm rich. Some of y'all not even there. You got time and you're not even showing God nothing impressive. You're not showing God nothing impressive. The world didn't make me rich. God made me rich. I ain't worried about no government. I ain't worried about no, 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 uh, 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 no, no threats because man didn't do this. God did it. I don't fear no man because man didn't do this. God made me rich. God healed my body when I had chronic asthma, when I was dying. God set me free. I live for God. You think I'm worried about this natural system? You think I'm worried about this natural world? You think I'm worried about flesh and blood? God, you hear what I said? God made me rich. God healed my body. God did it. No doctor could heal me from asthma. I went to doctor after doctor for 17 years and my condition just got worse. It was the Lord Jesus that took over this body and live out his life in this body. So how I dedicate myself, you dedicate yourself. Loyalty is dedicating yourself back unto God that has set you free, delivered you, had mercy on you. Some of you all take the mercy of God and do what you want to do. Spend your time how you want to spend. You don't recognize that God got you in CPR today. You think that because you breathe every day. Oh, this is just the earth. Oh, I just breathe. I'm going to breathe today. Tomorrow, I'm going to do this tomorrow. You don't know how much time you got on earth. You don't know how much you're going to live. You don't know if you're going to make it throughout this year. Some of you all are missing it because you're not in the spirit. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You're making so much plans for the future. You don't know your future. You don't know it. You don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know if you're going to be in your body by the end of 2022. You don't know it. Live sober. Live awake. Go after the presence of Jesus. Go after his word. You can't do nothing without his word. 
You can't pray. You can't sow seeds. You can't honor him. You can't forgive people without his words. You have to feed yourself his words. In uh, Luke chapter five, we see a powerful narrative uh, the word of God said that Jesus, he, he wanted to teach the people. So he got into the boat, but uh, more particular, uh, particular uh, lead, it was the boat of Peter. So he got in Peter's boat, which was very profound. It was very strategic. It was targeted. He got in Peter's boat in which I want, I want to magnify this, that there are times in your life where Jesus on purpose get in your boat because he ready to show you provisional miracles. He ready to show you supernatural money moving. He ready to reveal to you his economic glory. So he'll get into your boat. And a lot of times when, when Jesus get into your boat, you will hold on to fear and you'll push him out the boat. And then you live a life that's stuck. You live a life that is in debt. You live a life that don't have no miracles because you push him out the boat when you choose fear. Jesus on purpose got on Peter's boat because it was Peter's time to experience money cometh. Oh. My God, my God. It, it, it was Peter's time to experience the provisional ability of Jehovah God. Jehovah Jireh was manifesting in his life. And saints, one thing that I want to magnify to you that Peter let Jesus get in his boat. That means that he allowed Jesus to take his faith to the next level. He was open to learn. Arege de glosa. Grandes. He was open to be mentored, to be taught. He wanted information of the kingdom of heaven. I want you to catch this. When Peter saw Jesus get into his boat, he didn't fight Jesus and tell Jesus, you know, you know, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but uh, uh, no, 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 no. I know my situation. You got to be careful that you don't allow the flesh to respond to Jesus' schedule to multiply you. Don't let your flesh tell you how to perceive, oh my goodness, the calendar of cash, the calendar of debt cancellation, the calendar of Christ appearing in your financial matters your provisional matters, your, your, uh, uh, your, your, your living arrangements and conditions. Saints, I want to also magnify this. We in Luke chapter five. The word of God said that when uh, King Jesus got in his boat, that King Jesus told him to get the boat away from land. Get the boat away from land and let's get into the water. The land represent the earth realm the world, and the water represent the word. So at Jesus on purpose, when he got in Peter's boat, he was saying, let's get away from this nature of the first Adam so that you can identify the nature of the second Adam. Glezos, acarrege de glizo, grandes, vlaso, vrake di clabrazo, riga racrazos, rendes di carages, grostos, so now we in Luke chapter five, right? And we see Jesus telling him, let's get away from the land because the land is the natural realm. The water is God's realm. It is the kingdom of heaven and the land is the kingdom of this world. So what King Jesus was saying, I want to swap your systems so that what my kingdom has for you can come to you. Ah, garege de closa, da greke di gla. Sabrosta macarre guida racrase. Crondos, 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 rogos, logos, y classie. Cryros, cryros, crestes. Notice what happened next. 
The word of God said that King Jesus taught. He taught the people on the boat. And then after he teaches, he says, launch out your net. Launch out into the deep and let your net down. Saints, Jesus didn't give him the instruction to sow his net until after he taught. Because Jesus had infused Peter's atmosphere with the abundance anointed. Kleza, Kleizos. Jesus had infused Peter's atmosphere with wealth grace. So while Jesus was teaching, money angels was there, ready to minister for Peter. Abundant provision angels was there, ready to minister for Peter. Money cometh angels was there, ready to minister for Peter. Debt cancellation angels was there, ready to minister for Peter. Prosperity angels was there, ready to minister for Peter. Wealth angels, oh, ragabaka, regres, reges. And saints, Jesus didn't tell him about Jesus did not utter to him about what to do next until after he taught, because Jesus released an anointing of provision with his words, uh, an anointing of multiplication with his words. When Jesus is ready to multiply you, he speaks to you about the multiplication. That's why Ecclesiastes 11 said that he that is observing the winds will not sow. Because if you're looking at the natural world, the natural world don't got an abundance anointing. It is the words of Jesus that's carrying the abundance anointing. So when Jesus was talking in Peter's boat, the abundance anointing was intensifying. And when Jesus was fully done, Jesus knew the atmosphere is set for miracle money. The atmosphere is set for miracle provision. The, the atmosphere is set for instantaneous results and harvests. See, saints, I want you to catch this. That's why God picks your soul to be a teacher, a rabbi. Because what you got to understand, the seed can't multiply in a teaching list environment. Oh, uh, now you understand why you don't sow into a man underneath the bridge to get into the hundredfold. Because a man underneath the bridge don't got to teach an anointing. The seed, it's a photosynthesis is the teaching of the word. Oh, God, regis. Oh, God, regos. Oh, God, riga mandaga. Now you understand why you can't sow into a person in a homeless shelter to get into the thousandfold blessing. Because it is the teaching that is building the atmosphere for harvest. Do you understand? In a teaching, the words that's coming out of the teacher, angels are, are, are moving off of that vibration. Ministering spirits are moving off of that vibration. They, they are swarming to the vocabulary of your rabbi. So as they're teaching you, the atmosphere is filled with innumerable angels. You oh ragaba karege de klesde. The teaching translates you from the earth realm to Mount Zion. The teaching, it, 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 it brings you into the company of a cloud of many witnesses. Glozage, Grigas. And imagine when you sow 
Your seed is being wrapped in the environment of mantles, miracles, ministries. Saints, the minister of finances has a ministry of money. So the minister of finances, his whole uh, behavior mode is um, inducing you with money miracles. His whole conduct is to release unto you a money encounter with Jehovah Jireh. So saints, I, I, I want you to see this. When the word of God said in Hebrews 1, I did not minister in spirit sent forth to minister to those that are the heirs of salvation. That you being an heir of salvation, the salvation that you received wasn't just for your soul. Salvation means deliverance, to be set free, to be liberated. It, it was for the deliverance of your finances. So, so when it say that you are heir of salvation, you are narrow and small in your mind if you think that's just soulishly. It is a salvation for substance and money and finances and provision. It is deliverance from this world's Babylonian system that is slopeful, that is crooked, and that is full of thieves and robbers. Gregos, graca bacare que de clestos, la glacio correge de cle, la gestia caracas. So, saints, the ministering spirits know when you are heir of salvation. Meaning that God has stepped into your boat to deliver you. So let's go back to Luke chapter five. Jesus steps into his boat. And uh, on purpose, he picks Peter's boat. He didn't pick the other man's boat because Peter was in a set time for favor. You got to recognize your set time for favor because every time God is instructing you to sow, it is because he been dreaming about you reaping. God is not needing to take anything from you and leave it like that. He needs to take something from you so that you could qualify to take something from him. Many people don't understand grace. And many people don't understand the teaching of grace. That's why a lot of people are saying, you know, that was Old Testament, this New Testament. We ain't got to do that no more. But why are you broke? <laughs> Satan robbing you of the grace of sowing. So why are you saying we ain't got to do that? It already paid for. You're not paid for. So, so we're the manifestation of what you say in your life. It's not there, right? Uh, no. So, half truth. Allow Satan to laugh at your results. That's deep. Half truth. Allow Satan to laugh at your finished product. See, what a lot of people don't understand about grace, sowing is a grace and harvest is a grace. So when people say, you know, we ain't got to sow no seed to get God to bless us, he going to bless us either way. Because it's all according to grace. But what you missed is sowing is a grace. Harvest is a grace. So imagine you're saying, I'm going to reject the graces. But by grace, I'm going to be rich. I, 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 I'm not going, I don't need this. I'm underneath grace. You underneath grace, but you're rejecting the graces that you say you underneath. Sowing is not a law.
alone. It has become a grace. Meaning that God supplies power to your mind to sow money. He gives you strength, encouragement, energy, excitement, hopefulness to sow it. You notice that the word of God said, don't be weary in well-doing. For you shall reap if you faint not. So well doing is all about sowing. And saints, it's not just sowing money, but it's sowing prayer. It's sowing seeking God. It's sowing studying the word. It's, so, it's sowing uh, your time in God's presence. It's sowing his fruit in situations. So you sow peace. You sow joy. You sow uh, kindness, gentleness. But watch this, people of God. The word of God says, don't be weary. That means that even when you're sowing, Satan has scheduled to buffet your mind. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about it. When you're sowing, there is a section where Satan is going to speak to you. You can't tell me that he not. This ain't about whether you're powerful or you're not powerful. A lot of times, here's what people do. They act like Satan don't speak to them because they're like, oh, I'm powerful, so you don't speak to me. No, no, no. It's already in the seed principle. God on purpose have permitted a section where Satan will have the ability to speak up in the midst of your sowing schedule. You know why God allows that? Because now you get to see you, whether or not you genuine or not. Nobody got to tell you that you fake, you false. You get to weigh out yourself. Because when Satan speaks to you, now you got the opportunity to either keep on sowing or stop. And people stop because they're not real. People keep on sowing because they are real. I sow every day because I'm real. And I can look at my fruit. See, you ain't got to be no rocket scientist to understand where you at. Your own fruit will talk to you. Your, your fruit will be an indicator. Your fruit will be a confirmation. It will be a signal to you to let you know if you're really submissive to the soul of God. Are you a sower is submissive to the soul of God? Grezos, gragase, gragrasto, tumoriga de cleste, grandi acorrege de cleste, doragas, de rista bazoco, varendele legima i caracando corricu isti acaraga, de grastie, de brus magarigos. Magondia Gareges, Monolia, De Glastia. The sower is submissive to God's truth. So there's no other truth that could come to them. There's no other reality that could saturate them. There's no other word system that can convince them or persuade them. You could look at your sowing as an indicator on how well you have respected God's presence. That's why in Genesis chapter four, you see how Abel respected God's presence. Cain did not respect God's presence. So he can't keep sowing because sowing is all about respect. And, 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 and the word of God not only said that he was showed that he respected God's presence, but the word of God said that God respected his sowing. Do you understand how dangerous that is? Greg. And then John, the apostle that Jesus loved, spoke about it in his gospels that. Uh, that Abel was righteous. So now the disciple that was the closest to Jesus is talking about a sower that lived hundreds of years ago. Oh, 
Why is Apostle John talking about Abel? Why? Why? Why is he even in the brain cells of John? See, sowers are memorable. They are, ah, sowers are memorable to God. God can't stop thinking about a sower. He can forget a non-sower. Oh, you, 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 oh, you, 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 you. God can't, God is obsessed in his mind with a sower. That's why he make you rich. Because he was thinking about you all the time. That's why he caused men to give into your bosom. Because he was working out things for you while you were sowing. Oh, God ain't looking at my seed. You know, he's not studying me. Yeah. You let the enemy lie to you and trick you out. God is obsessed with the sower. God does special privileges towards the sower. God had John's mind even after Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus done ascended, John is thinking about Abel. Why he thinking about Abel for? Think about it. Glegos, gladia caraga dan gores. Apostle Paul was thinking about Abraham. Look in Galatians 3.14. He said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you. The blessing of Abraham? Man, Abraham lived hundreds, thousands, long time before you ever came on the scene, Apostle Paul. Why are you talking about a man that lived? No, no, no. Because, because see, Abraham is a God in the spirit because he had mastered perfect love via sowing. He had mastered the kingdom system via sowing. He had mastered God's soul via sowing. That's why when people are committed and dedicated to sowing, they carry a level of loyalty and servanthood and consistency and genuineness, and they follow a regiment of purity that other people that's supposed to be in the body of Christ can't even think about accomplishing. Because sowing builds up your soul. When you honor in God, you are receiving higher grace. Every time you sow, higher grace is coming to you. Every time you sow, angels are swarming into your life, even angels that you never met before. What I love about sowing is that you get to meet angels that you have never encountered a day in your life. They come into your life and the Father allows them to invade your life because you're honoring him. So he honors you. He gives you power over angels. Somebody need to write that down. Well, if you flow with me, you'll write down a lot of stuff that I done quoted in there. So I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hit nothing. Because if if you really smart, you'll catch a lot of stuff that I'm saying, and you'll find a way to quote it. <laughs> Glory to God. Sowing gives you power over the angelic ministries. You know, as I say angelic ministry, I say angelic ministries because they got more than one ministry. So saints, I want you to catch this. Abraham was a sowing God and had authority over angelic ministries. You remember when he spoke to his servant to go look for a wife for Isaac, Genesis 24. He said that the angel of the Lord gonna go before you to prosper your way. Wait a minute. Ah. Abraham just sent an angel. Saints, you missed it. Abraham just told his servant, I got power over this angel. I'm going to send this angel so that you, so that it's definite that you picked the right wife for my son. Saints, these are all the privileges of a sower. Saints, there's a lot of religious people that don't even understand this. That's what I'm telling you. This is a mystery. And it's only revealed to God's friends. When you're sowing, you have power over the angelic ministries. And you could send angels. You could send money angels in prayer. You could send abundant provision angels in prayer. You could send them. Since I told you of a story years ago when somebody wronged me financially. And I was sowing. I was inside the vehicle. And, and the Lord started speaking to me and said, send the angel to go arrest him. I did it. And in less than no time, 
that same person say, I got, I got, I got some money for you. I, I got paid me and I had more. I had more than what, 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 what was old because I had sent the angel. Clegas, doc ragi astica ragas, lo glostos, le clandi glali ize. And, and imagine that angel was submitted to my authority as a sower because I'm honoring God. When you honor God, you have leverage to speak up and to call money in, call finances in, call riches in, call opportunities in. When you are sower, you can't be lazy. You have to recognize that God may use you in a workplace. God may use you to solve another man's problems. God may use you to help Potiphar. You got to be focused and not miss your moment. Let's go back to this story. Uh, I didn't finish it with Luke. Let's go back to Luke chapter five. Le carreges dabor ragasta de bros de acarrege de criso cleliante cleliose criste da rogo zacarrege marrege mondugo rugus glestiaga blestiaga blestia caracondos clestos mocosti moclasia in sense why won't you catch this jesus waited till he talked to release the anointing, to get all the angels in motion. And then he gave Peter the instruction to let down his net. Now, saints, I also want to talk something deep here, that when he said, let down your net, he was also telling him, let down your current financial level. Saints, there's something that we, we call in this life called net worth. And net worth is really a term that describes this is how much this person has accumulated. Net worth is a term that they use to say that this is how much this person has collected. This is their financial level. This is how much money they have, how much assets they have. And so this is their net worth. Watch this. Jesus said, let down your net. I want you to catch this. Jesus empowers you to betray your current financial level, to receive the financial level that he has scheduled. Jesus gives you glory and grace so that you could betray what has been coming to you for what is supposed to be coming to you. When I say this, I means that there is a power that he gives you to sow out of what comes. So it comes to you, but you're not banking your life off of that. You're sowing out of it. You're not keeping it and saying this, this, this how I'm going to survive. This how I'm going to make it. You're honoring God with it. So when you do that, you're telling God, I'm betraying this. Betraying your, your current financial level don't mean, okay, tomorrow I'm going to walk up to the boss and say, boss, I'm betraying my current financial level. I ain't coming back to this workplace no more. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You see, that's not what betraying your financial level is. Betraying your financial level means that I'm not taking what's coming to me as my safety. I'm taking what's coming to me as my seed. Oh. And so I'm not going to let this hold me hostage. I'm not going to let this wrap me up. I'm not going to let this convince me that this is all the provision that's going to come to me in March. That's going to come to me in April. That's going to come to me in May. That's going to come to me in June and July. Ah, ah. Ha! I'm not going to let this determine my harvest. This ain't all that God got for me. There's about to be some miracles swarming in my life. Money coming to me now. There's going to be some miracles swarming in my life.
You have to betray your current financial level through stewardship. Stewardship is the ability to discern what amount does God want from what I have? Oh, stewardship is readiness to cheerfully give without fear. Stewardship is a prophetic glasses to see what's coming to you after you sow. Oh, let the, let the anointing of stewardship come to you. Let the anointing of stewardship sit on you because stewardship is also prophetic glasses to see the wealth that's incoming. If you betray your current income, there's wealth incoming. Wealth cometh to me now. I'm a recipient of Isaiah 60. I'm a recipient of Isaiah, Isaiah 61. So watch this. Luke chapter five. After Peter lets down his net, money cometh. You're going to have to let something down. That means that you're going to have to sow it. He had to sow that net. Now watch this, people of God. Watch this. Before all of that, I want to show you something. How you got to break a spirit for you to start sowing. Peter told Jesus, I had already did this and it didn't work. See, Satan has traumatized and created trauma and wounds in people that was created to sow. To convince them that God don't got miracles in money for you. See, are you living underneath a satanic verdict? That's stopping your financial victory. Are you living underneath a satanic judgment? That's stopping your money justice. See, Simon got this tradition inside of his soul where he's saying, you know, I, I'm not really expecting nothing right now, you know, because, uh, you know, I done did this before, you know, uh, but, you know, you know, I mean, ain't nothing was there. I checked, you know, I checked. Ain't nothing happened. You know, I ain't see no checks. I ain't see no nothing. I, Ecclesiastes 11 say, he that regards the clouds will not reap. So you see a dimension in Simon that's wrestling. There's a dimension where he regards the clouds. Whoa. But Jesus is training him to regard the Christ. You don't get harvests because you regard the clouds. You get harvests because you regard the Christ. Jesus is seed training him. Now only see, um, we have heard about seed trainer, but I just heard the Holy Ghost say, there's a harvest trainer. See, your, your prophet of God, your apostle, the one that's teaching you the word, they are harvest trainers. So they train you how to receive the harvest and not let Satan fake you out with wrong pictures, wrong scriptures. Oh, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. How the hell I love money and I'm giving it. So back, back Satan. Don't come to me and talk to me about no love of money. Where's your sowing account? Show me how much you have sown. Get, give me a count. I want to see how much have you given to the work of God. Don't, don't come to me telling us no love of money is the root of all evil. Since our generation, they don't even know scriptures now. Now they saying money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. Stupid. So who paid your phone bill for you to even quote that? Who paid the phone bill for you to even write such son, son so stupid? Who paid your Wi-Fi for you to write something so stupid? 
So you use money? Why did you use that money? It's evil, right? You just said that money is the root of all evil. You, so, so you telling me that you use money. So how did you buy your meal yesterday? How did you pay for gas? Huh? Who paid for the electricity? Is it money? Who paid for your outfit that you wore? Did you? Well, I ain't spent a lot of money. But you spent money, right? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. So, so uh, hypocrisy is when you criticize something that you do. So, 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 or, 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 or hypocrisy is when you engage in a philosophy, an activity that you yourself said was wrong. So, so how, how you going to come to me and tell me, oh, the love of money, the love of money. And then at the same time, you're spending money in your own life. Don't let a non sower counsel you about God's covenant to make you rich. Because a non sower is robbing God. So their philosophy is off. Imagine the soul of somebody that could have God breathing into them all the time and they're stealing money. They're robbing him. Since the word rob is very different from the word steal. Because saying some people could steal and they, they could be a little gentle. You know, they might slip. Ah, I'll take that five. I'll take that 20 from you. I'll take that 100 from you. But they're real gentle. But robbers, they come with force. So saints, if you remember what God told Malachi, spoke to Malachi, will a man rob God? That means that there is a violence that people have in their nature when they're not sowing and honoring God. That means there's a cruelty. They, they have no compassion towards the presence of God. There is a realm in them that's hardened. For somebody to rob, that means that they are violently choosing to keep what God wants invested in him from him. So you think that that person could love you? Imagine some men get with women that don't sow. A woman that don't sow is a hoe. You think she's going to be loyal to you? A woman that don't sow is a hoe. A man that don't sow is a crow. You think you think that that man you think that, that man gonna be able to hold you down? The man don't even hold God down, and God up there breathing into him. You think that that man got loyalty to you? How he gonna be loyal to you? He not even loyal to the one that's is you. Think about it, baby. Is you breathing life into him? No, right? So you mean to tell me that you expect him to pay attention to you, and he don't even pay attention to the one that is breathing? The life into him, he wouldn't exist without this person called the Lord, Jesus. So, so you think that you're not the one breathing into him. You think that, you think that. See, a lot of times you get into those sexual conversations with people. What you need to ask them, how much do you sow? Because I need to know what your sensibility is towards God. Because how are you going to discern me when I'm hurting and I'm not telling you that I'm hurting, but I need you to search me out. I need you to look for me. I need you to find out what's going on inside of me. If you don't even care about what's going on inside of God, how mean you going to be together? You ain't even going to locate when I'm bothered. You're not even going to have discernment when I'm wounded. You're not even going to know what affects me. You're not even going to know what makes me happy because you don't even know what makes God happy. And God is the one that made you. You want to ask that man, though, do you got a big this or big that? You need to ask him, do he got a big honor? I'm going to tell you right now, if a man is a seed, so a God can fix him. It don't matter if he's small, short, long, stroking. He's going to have some abilities from God. Because God, 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 it don't matter how, how small he is, God will give him power and might to work with what he's working with. It'll work. Hi, Kai, Kai, Kai. Oh, God, guy, 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 like, like, guy, 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 guy. 
It's okay for you to laugh, baby. It's okay for you to laugh. It's okay for you to laugh. It's all right for you to laugh. It's all right for you to laugh. Some of y'all done been there. You tell so I'm still waiting on the miracle because I ain't see small working for me. All right. All right. But he not a sower. So that still validate my point. He was a sower. It did work for you. Guy, 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 guy. It's okay for you to laugh. It's okay for you to laugh. It's okay for you to laugh. You can sit right here, be all uptight and uptight, but other things are tight too. And uh, I want you to be free, all right? You know, sometimes you want to be all stuck up, but there's other things that's not being stuck up. You see what I'm saying? Not being stuck and not being the stuck. See, I've had some stories. I can't really tell that story, but I dag. That's funny though. If I was on a comedy, if I was on a comedy uh, uh, um, thing, I'll be able to tell those stories, you know. But some of y'all, you're not, you're not, you're not fully delivered. I'm delivering you, so I would, so I can't really tell you that. Cause then, ooh, shut, 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 shut it up. Luke chapter five. I want to say this as well. King Jesus is revealing to a, uh, Peter his sowing ability and his harvest ability that's hidden on the inside of him. Peter has not encountered this realm of supernatural abundance. He has not encountered this realm of massive prosperity. And so this is all new to him. So, so I want you to see this, that even the Lord Jesus has, by the Holy Ghost, he has to actually train you how to discover the sowing you and the harvest you. Because you're not only a sower, you are a harvester. You are an invisible magnet uh, drawing things in, drawing things in that's in your inheritance. So watch this here. He let down his net. And the word of God said in verse six that there was enclosed a multitude of fishes, which is a multitude of money, a multitude of provision. So watch this here. I want you to catch this. When 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 Peter encountered this, the word of God said uh, uh, that it broke their net. Oh, caragas. De grostos, crozos, creques. The word of God said that it broke their net. That means that the financial level was destroyed. Saints, I, I, I'm going to say something real strong. Sometimes the financial income that you're receiving is a, is a net that needs to be broken. And I, I didn't say that you break it by leaving your job or break it by rejecting money. No, you break it by sowing from it. The net was broken. That means that that level of finances, that level of provision that Peter was stuck on. He just opened up the heavens and the windows of heaven for God to pour him out more than he ever received. Watch this here. Saints, I receive massive abundance from you, Father God. Thank you. Some of y'all have dated people right here. All of this is wet. When they pick this up right here, all of this is wet right here. When they pick this up right here, all of this is wet. And some of y'all have dated men and women that when they pick this up, all of this is wet right here. All of this is just wet, wet, all of that, wet. Wrong wetness, wrong location, but it's still wet all right there. I, I, I want you to hear me again. All of that was right, wet right there. I'm talking about all of this up here, yeah. All that right there was wet. As soon as they picked their hand up, right, all of that was wet right there. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm talking to you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter five, we're seeing that Peter, because he obeyed the word of Jesus, he's in a kingdom system of miraculous abundance, miraculous money, miraculous results, miraculous harvests, miraculous prosperity, miraculous satisfaction. Now, saints, let's go deep on this. Those fish tasted so good. 
I mean, that was the best fish that Peter ever tasted before at, at, at that point in his life. So what I want you to catch is this. This is the satisfying dispensation of God on your life provisionally. And see, some of y'all got to catch this. When you start working God's system of sowing, you are now engaging this satisfactory uh, dispensation provisionally. Look what happened here. He got fish. That means that he was going to eat this fish, swallow this fish, and this was food that he was now going to have a buffet. So he was at a restaurant. Saints, sowing brings you into a restaurant of riches. Sowing brings you into a restaurant to taste God. Gregos, Galego, Ragigas. That's why Psalms say, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, you can't taste and see that the Lord is good if you're not a sower. If you ain't got no seed. If you're not honoring God financially, how are you going to taste and see that he's good? You got to put your seed in the ground. You got to honor him. You got to show him that you locked in. People don't know how to lock into God until you sow. You can't tell me that you locked into God and you're not sowing. When people are dedicated about a cause, they release their money into the cause. Don't that's what they do with organizations and charities? Oh, you want to feed these people? Well, piss some money down. You notice that, right? They do that even in every organization, everything. So, when you are locked into God, so and tells God, I'm married to you. When you sow into the Lord, you're telling him, Lord, I'm in covenant with you. Lord, I build this altar. This is our ceremony. We married, Father. I'm not only engaged to you, but I am your bride. I am your pride. I'm your trophy. You could boast in me. You notice that God went go boast about Job, but Job was a sower. So God really was boasting about a sower. Grezos, glagi eklesti akaragas. Let's go even further. The word of God said that in Luke chapter five, in verse eight, that after um, Peter had saw this massive abundance, this massive uh, provisional miracle, it says that he told the Lord, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. And he said, oh Lord, now, I want you to catch this. Notice, he has a revelation of Jesus being his Lord, which means you're, you're in charge of everything that I have and everything that I am. How are you going to step into abundance if Jesus ain't got charge and control over everything that you have and over th everything that you, 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 you are? Your nature and what you bring in, your net worth. How are you going to have abundance, angels moving for you if he's not the Lord of how you spend your time, the Lord of what you do on Facebook, the Lord of what you do on YouTube. See, I'm showing you all how you adversaries to your own harvest. I'm showing you. See, this is love. I'm teaching you on here how you block money cometh. If he's not the Lord of you and all that you have, how are you going to expect abundance? Peter said, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Oh Lord, he recognized Jesus as his Lord. That means that you in charge of me. You get to dictate to me what you want me to do today. You get to dictate uh, what I study, what I allow in my eye gate, what I allow in my ear gate. Haze, grogosukos, 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 grogosika, rekedekles, iklagos, iklamangos, ikrogos, ekrage. Grando corresdes de rage, brusta ma rege de clisdo o correge de clase, randos dares, brusta ma carrequidas. Some of you all gonna see multimillionaire status within these five years. You gonna see multimillionaire status within these five years. You gonna see multimillionaire status within these five years. Watch. What we're seeing that abundance produces conviction. Wealth, divine wealth, produces divine consciousness for righteousness. Divine abundance miracles, money miracles, provisional miracles 
affect the soul to surrender more to God, to submit to God. If you notice, he started repenting. So saints, wealth carries an anointing of repentance. Abundance carries an anointing of repentance. Wealth speaks a sound wave of repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You're not talking to me. Ah! Ho! Oh! Ho! Oh! Ha! See, when you're rich, even when money coming to you, God will be talking to you about repenting. Look, Peter just got his biggest miracle. He's satisfied. And then all of a sudden, he break down and say, uh 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 uh, uh oh, I've been wronging you, Jesus. Uh oh, uh oh, Jesus, I've been spending my time wrong. Uh oh, Jesus, I've been ignoring you. Uh oh, Jesus, my zeal is not the same. My dedication not the same. My studying of the word not the same. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I I've been looking at stuff I'm not supposed to look at. I'm sorry. I I've been in talking with people I'm not supposed to talk. I'm sorry. I've been looking for attention from toxic people. I'm sorry. I've been gossiping, angry, bitter, lustful, fearful, distracted, prayerless, unthankful, ungrateful, disloyal, disconnected, dead. You notice he fell down at Jesus' knees. Knees also represent prayer. So the location that he fell down at was prayer. So, so, so he fell down not into sin. He fell down not into temptation, but he fell down to get back to communicating to the Lord. He fell down to get back to talking with the Lord about everything, for listening to the voice of God, for, for crying out for God's will and telling Jesus, I want what you want. Watch this here. The word of God said in the latter parts that James and John was with him and they was his partners. Watch this. Cleza, I'm closing. And the word of God said that James and John was associated with Peter. The word of God said that when uh, Jesus got them back to the land, you remember they was in the water. He got them back to the land. The Bible says that they forsook all in verse 11 and they followed him. Oh, see, wealth and riches is for people that's willing to forsake all to follow him. If your child is more important to you than Jesus, if your wife more important to you than Jesus, if family, if culture, if skin color, are quesos, manda, if your pride and your stance and your perspective and your philosophies, if your own understanding is more important to you, your own schedule, your own lust, your own bad habits, your own weaknesses and failures, your flaws, if they're more important to you than Jesus, you're not qualified for the wealth gates over your life, money cometh over your life. The word said that when they got back to the natural realm, which is the land, remember what I told you, the land represents the natural realm. When they got back to the natural realm, they said, we don't want you. Keep me supernatural. Ha! Ha! Money! Come it to me now. Keep me supernatural. I don't want the natural realm. I don't want these natural finances, natural mindsets, natural health reports, natural soulless conditions. I don't want these natural dreams, natural visions, natural schedules, natural desires, natural appetite, natural conduct, 
natural. Keep me. When they got back to the natural realm, they said, we divorce. When they got back to the natural realm, they said, we, we ain't dating no more. When they got back to the natural realm, they said, now nah, you can't enter me and I ain't entering in you. They got back to the natural realm. They said, you can't talk to me. I don't want to hear what you got to say. When they got back to the natural realm, they said, you can't determine what health I live in, what wealth I live in, what mindset I live in, how I produce, what I produce, when I produce, where I produce. You can't decide it no more. When they got back to the natural realm, they decided you ain't got no power over me no more. Jesus is Lord. 